Hello and good afternoon. Hello, is this Arrow? Yes, it is. This must be Aaron, whose name is almost like an arrow. <laughs> yes, and, and I hope I pronounced your name right. Absolutely you did. Absolutely you did. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. I'm just trying to beat the heat out here in California. Where are you at? Oh, I'm in Carolina. We're, we're Right now, guy, you're going to be a little jealous. We're hitting at 89 right now, but I know what you guys have got out there. Oh, yeah. You know, it's brutal. It's going to be uh, well into the hundreds today. So. Wow. Wow. Well, let's try to cool things off by talking about this song, Baha'i Sunshine. And I want, I want to start it off by, uh, is, is there a connection to the Baha'i faith? Because I'm feeling something in this song. Well, uh, you know, the thing about the title is uh, Bahia, um, Bahia is, yeah, it was a, a, a little girl that I knew when I was like five years old. She used to live down the street from me, and her, and her name was Bahia. And I always loved the name, thought it was really pretty. And I just tagged the word sunshine at the end just to kind of give it a little uh, visibility of, uh, you know, like a image imagery, I guess, you know. Uh, so it, that's where the, the title came from. It just was a name that I liked. And then I discovered that it was an actual place in Brazil. Yeah. And uh, didn't know that, but I didn't know that there was a Bahia faith as well. So I'm learning all these things about this title that I really knew nothing about. <laughs> well, I, cool. I looked I looked up the word, and, and its whole entire definition is about togetherness, unity, no judgment, all people welcome. Well, well, then that just gives it a whole new meaning, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, especially when you're talking about the sunshine. And so that's, that's why my interpretation right away was, oh, I, I totally get what this song is about. All right, then. Well, you know, there's there's a, that's the beauty of music, man, is that you can really just kind of, you know, take it for, for how it hits you. And that's the meaning to you, you know, so that's the beauty of it. Bringing the song together, it's got such a global approach to it. In other words, it could fit into any country at any time and be welcomed. You think? I hope so. Yeah, I, um, I feel it. I feel it. You know, I, most artists, when they, you know, I, I would imagine when you're writing a song, you're not thinking of anything, but just, you know, you're in the moment and trying to uh, create something that you can live with and, and be proud of and hopefully want to share with people. And then when it comes out in the end, when, when I hear things like that, like what you just mentioned, it just makes it all worth it, man. That's cool. Yeah, because it's one of those songs that, you know, 10, 15 years from now, maybe even 20 years, people are still going to, they're going to go Amazon and look for your name and that song's going to come up and it's going to put them in that new place. Yeah, yeah, that that's cool. You're making my day right now. <laughs> well, see, I, that's what I love about today's modern day music is the fact that people know where to go get it. We just need to guide them to that area to where when once they find it, now they've got to support it and the other songs that go with it. Very true. And and that's, you know, uh, the main reason why I'm doing these interviews now, just trying to get the word out there. It's really difficult to get uh, ears on new music, whether you're. Paul McCartney or an unknown artist like myself. And, you know, I, I and I use Paul McCartney as a reference because I remember he came out with another solo record a few years back mm -hmm. and it flew right under the radar. You know, I mean, this is Paul McCartney, a Beatle you're talking about, one of the greatest songwriters of all time. And, you know, you barely even hear about any new music from the guy. So it's just it, it's incredible that there's so much music out there, but it's just very difficult to get to the good stuff. And to find it. That's that's the thing about it, because people are very quick to put it up on, on TikTok. Now you're starting to see music on threads. I mean, it's amazing how people will quickly move something when they fall in love with it. Yeah, very true. Very true. Have you joined threads yet? No, and I don't think I will. Okay. <laughs> You know, honestly, to, to Arrow, to be honest with you, I, you know, social media is a necessary evil in the yes. music business or in, in any business nowadays, um, you know, and it, it, if, if I didn't have to use it, I probably wouldn't use it at all, to tell you the truth. I'm totally with you because that, that's the thing about it. It's like even as a mobile entertainer, I'm trying to figure out where are the people. I, well, then I've got to go be with the people, even though I don't want to be with them on a social media network. I've still got to be there. Right. Yeah. I was going to say the, the those that inspired you to become that musician. I mean, your your journey, it, it, it needs to be shared. It's like it's it really belongs on the inside sleeve of an album. Wow, that's cool. I never thought of it that way. Um, yeah, I don't know what, you, what the question was going to be, but uh yeah, it's thought-provoking right there. Well, and, um, and that's the thing about the One thing that, that I love to do is I'd like to, you know, it, it's what I feel in that moment of now. I'm such a stream thinker, so sometimes it won't be a question. Sometimes it'll be just like, look, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I felt. I took notes while I was listening to it. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, I mean, I, I don't know so much about like how interesting my journey is as a musician. Um, I mean, the, the most interesting thing that I can I can come up with in my journey is that I got to get in one of my favorite bands of all time. So um, as a bass player. So when, uh, you know, being a fan of, of the band Y&T when I was a kid mm -hmm. and then having the posters on the walls, it's everything of the makings of the Marky Mark movie Rockstar, you know, so <laughs> uh, it, it, it that's the, the part that the. the uh, I guess uh, the big button on on it right there is you know having that opportunity to uh, get to play with a legendary artist as Dave Menachetti and the band Y and T. You know, how did you reach beyond that? And the reason why I bring that up is because I was just uh, I listened to an interview with Kelly Rowland yesterday where where her days with with Destiny's Child was over, but she didn't think she was over. How did you push yourself beyond that? Just because the group isn't there, it doesn't mean my creativity has to has to go silent. Yeah, well, that's just the, the natural born artist and in, in, in anyone that's creative, you know, whether you're a chef or, you know, a cook or whether you're a carpenter or, you know, you're a musician or an actor. I mean, it, I've, I've always looked at it. It's just going to come out in any form. It's going to come out. You know, it doesn't matter what band or group you're with. If you're a true artist, you know, your art is going to come out in some way. Um, but uh, just to, to be clear, is Y and T is very functional uh, right now. We're, we're it's not over oh, yet. That's awesome. That's yeah. See, because you, uh, you know how people are. If if I'm not listening to it on 106.5, or if I'm not seeing it on America's Got Talent, then then where is it? And so you know how people go that way. Right, right, right. No, I, I agree totally. Um, you know, lucky for for the band Y and T is we do have a built in fan base that's been around uh, fifty years. Yes, um, the band is coming up on its fiftieth anniversary in twenty twenty four. We'll be out touring. Uh, we will be, uh, you know, just doing uh, everything we can to to really ram it home with the fiftieth anniversary thing, and then see what comes out after that. But um, you know, it's still uh, still functioning, still moving. Uh, in fact, we're playing this weekend. We're doing uh, the twenty first, twenty second, twenty third down in Southern California, <laughs> doing a little run of dates down there, and then uh, uh, we're looking at uh, some world travels, uh, Japan, uh, UK, Europe, things like that in 24. So I'm going to stay busy with that. But back to the solo music is, uh, you know, when I do have downtime, which there has been quite a bit of it uh, ever since uh, the, the pandemic stuff, um, still trying to, to move forward in the, uh, you know, normal touring right. schedules. But, um, you know, I just I find myself at, at points uh within the year or whatever that I, I just start rattling off a bunch of songs and, and writing and, you know, recording and, um, you know, and that's what led to Bahia Sunshine was, uh, you know, I had the song sitting around for a little while in my head, had a little demo of it from way back. And I just sort of thought, you know, maybe this is the right time for this song to um, emerge. And I could take it in a different direction than the way I had left the demo so long ago. And I rewrote all the all the lyrics. Um, I kept the chorus section, but I did rewrite all the verse sections. And uh, so it's yeah it, the way it came out I'm, I'm i'm proud of it i i uh i think it's cool when you bring in new lyrics do you have to give yourself permission to accept them because we're all perfectionists and we're all you know we're all very strict at making sure no this has got to stay to the original scene but yeah but i love the idea because I've, I've been known for that as well to go in there and scratch out different areas of a song and say no nah, i want to i'm feeling something else in this moment yeah, I think some of the best songs have been rewritten. Yeah. As in, you know, sometimes, I, hey, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I know that there's songs that have been, you know, Prince, for one, has, has been known to just whip out a pen and paper and write a hit song in one pass. Um, but there's many songs that have been written and rewritten uh, a few times over to uh, perfect it or bring it a little closer to the, you know, uh, idea of what the artist was trying to achieve. And I think that's what I was doing with, with Bahia Sunshine was, uh, you know, the lyrics that I had for the song prior on a demo just didn't uh, go with the way I was feeling today, you know. And and so it, it, it inspired me to to take a look uh, where I am at the moment again and recreate it in a way that makes sense to me in my own world. Did you have to go in and, and get artists to come with you uh, in, into the studio in the way that, okay, you had the idea for the song, now we have to build the song? Or did you lay every, every one of the tracks out by yourself and then build it from there? Everything you hear is me playing everything. Nice. So I don't, 
Yeah, I don't have a band. I don't have a solo band. Maybe down the road sometime I'll, I'll put something together and go play this stuff live. I would love that opportunity. I just don't know when the time will permit to do that. But, um, uh, yeah, so all the instrumentation, uh, you know, everything, all the production, mixing, everything, you know, I'm a kind of a, you know, just, take it on myself which <laughs> it's a double-edged sword you know when you think about it because it is great to bounce off of other artists <laughs> and other people in the room but when you don't have that opportunity to hey what do you think of this mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like you just got to trust your gut instinct and just kind of just roll with it you know yeah I mean, very paul mccartney of you right there because i mean i remember when paul mccartney's first solo album came out and and those of us on the radio were talking about that paul did all this work and you're going what are you kidding me yeah, yeah, incredible. You know, and there's so many artists like that when you, you take a deeper dive into it. You know, Lenny Kravitz is one yes. that comes to mind. He, yes. He's another one that plays all the instruments and his own productions. Prince, of course, Paul McCartney. Um, you know, I'm sure there's definitely tons more when you think about it. But, uh, you know, sometimes people just work in a, in a faster pace and they don't have time to sit around and, and, and bounce things off people. Yeah. There's like, hey, get out of my way. I know where I'm going. You know, do you have to practice discipline only because I know what it's like? I'm, I'm in a studio right now and, and I, I have to be out of here at a certain time. Otherwise, I'll stay in here all damn day. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I feel with music, writing music, if the ideas are flowing, don't stop it. Yeah. You know, why, why, why put a cap on it? And and I'll find myself in the studio for ten to twelve hours in a day. I won't eat. I won't even go to the bathroom. <laughs> I just keep on rolling. You know. <laughs> so, what do you when, when you're in the studio? Are you looking out any windows? Because like right now, I'm overlooking a forest here in South Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm 23 feet above the forest floor. Deer walk by all the time. Hawks are out there and all that kind of stuff. What what do you use as an inspiration? Well, you know, I don't like to be distracted. Okay. So I, I, I like to work in, in, in an environment where I'm a little closed off. I don't, you know, sure, it's nice to look out a window and see a beautiful scene. Um, if I had that, I'd probably, you know, have the window open. But, <laughs> you know, uh, but no, I, I like to just really get, just get focused into what I'm, what I'm there to do. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, I'm sure that's, that could be inspiring to be in a nice place, you know. That's like Neil Young. Uh, have you seen his studio where it's out there in that that it's a barn, but it, the whole backside of it doesn't exist anymore? But he thought, I'm I'm just going to write music and produce music in this barn because I just feel something. Yeah, well, if, if that's if that's the where you feel it, you know, I've always said it's like having your antenna up. You know, when you've got the antenna up and you're receiving stuff, you know, go with it, roll with it. So it sounds like that's what Neil did there. Yeah. Is there a certain place that you've traveled to in all your years in the way of going? Okay, I know I'm going back to this city, and I know that when I go there and I sit in this place, something's going to come to me. Well, when 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 I'm touring, it's, it's very busy. It's a hectic schedule okay. and writing doesn't even come into play. It honestly doesn't. I mean, if I'm in a hotel room somewhere and, and if I've got, you know, an instrument or something, I might have a riff or, you know, but it, nothing in, intensive, you know, I know there's artists that record on the road. They'll have their little laptops with them, mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to do that kind of thing. But I, 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 honestly uh it's just more of such a hectic schedule to just be up and moving all the time you know so yeah riding on the road doesn't work for me that's for sure i i need downtime and i need uh you know a, a certain amount of space to yep. just stretch out oh i can so relate with that i write about that all the time all i want is space i need space what are you going to do to get the space okay i'm going to figure it out so i defrag those questions and just keep asking them i need to find space well find it where what's in your way Right, yeah, and if you can find what's in your way and remove it, then yeah. you're on to something, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah, then you can get busy. Is this part of an EP, or are you going to go for a full album here? It's going to be part of an EP, yeah. and so the, the plan is I'm going to release By He Is Sunshine as the first single, and then I have uh, another song called Right the Wrong that I'm going to put out with another video to go with that. I do have a lyric video that's going to be coming with By He Is Sunshine as well. Um, and to take it further, I may do a full production video. Just I don't know yet. We'll see what kind of reception there is, if any, on with the song. But... Um, and then I'm going to take these these newer tracks. I've got four brand new tracks that I've already recorded. Nice. They're done. And then I'm going to take a song called Live for Today, which I had put out. I think it was in 21, late 21. Um, and I'm going to put that on the physical EP as well. So I'm looking at probably six tracks. It'll, there will be one cover, and I'm not sure what that will be yet. Um, 
it could be the single that I'd put out pr- previously as well, Children of, Children of the Revolution mm. by T-Rex. I did a version of that. Really? So that may end up on the physical EP. Um, because I feel like, you know, when you when you put stuff out just for streaming purposes, I think things get lost mm-hmm. quickly mm-hmm. And, and lost in the shuffle. Um, but when you've got it on a physical piece of something, you know, a CD, uh, record, vinyl, um, and you have that in your hand, you're going to be more prone to want to play it. So uh, I, I want to make sure that I put, you know, my, my best stuff on the physical uh, product. You know, there, there's such there. a movement right now to go back to the CDs because my 17 year old grandson, uh, is, he wants my CD collection. And I go, you've, you've got streaming. No, I'm fine, dude. I, I want the CDs. I, I want to physically have the power of choice and have it in my hands. Well, that's smart because you own it. You know, um, this all music in the in the air and in in the ether. You know, I I'm not really uh, I don't condone it. You know, I think it's cool for for its own portability, I guess, and and to be so quick to access it if you if you know what you're looking for. But nothing beats the physical product. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think we're going to get closer and closer to maybe some rules when it comes to these AIs? Because, I mean, there's got to be copyrights on the vocals now. There's got to be copyrights on the way you play that guitar. There's got to be something to protect the artist. Yeah, that, you know, I don't know too much about the AI thing. I've played, I've dabbled in it a little bit. What I've done is I've taken song lyrics and I've dumped them in and I ask the AI, create a music video script and it'll spit something out. And it's pretty incredible. I mean, I got to admit, it it really is thought provoking. But at the same time, if anyone can do what I just did, it's just going to flood things even more it's just going to turn into this just hodgepodge of just everything's going to start to look the same sound the same i think i but i could be wrong i don't know you know it's all future based man it's just it's insane really it's always exciting to watch it happen yeah yeah well we live in a very interesting time man we're very lucky to be living in these times right now so true where can they go to find out more about you aaron so they can give you some love and i know you've got you've got merchandise yeah, I'm. Uh, you could get it, uh, all info at AaronLee.com. Uh, I've got all my links with the socials uh, and all the audio, uh, all the music. I've got some merch up there. Uh, everything is right there at AaronLee.com. All right. Well, I know with this EP coming, I want to talk to you with more and more of the songs. So, I mean, because I want to hear the history of how these songs came in came into play. Awesome. Excellent. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? You too. Thanks for uh, for the talk, and I appreciate it, Arrow. Hope to talk to you soon.